What's up everybody? Welcome to the video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2018 Volkswagen Atlas in Curcuma Yellow Metallic. What a cool color for this car. It's right at the beginning of October 2017, so it's kind of a neat color for the month of October, right? Not pink though, like the pink beetle. But anyway, stay tuned over the next few minutes. We'll be taking a look at this vehicle, figuring out exactly what is the hot button that people really do like about the Atlas, what's some of the things people don't like about the Atlas, and most importantly, figure out what's so special about it on the S model like this one that makes the price over $30,000 for this vehicle. Stay tuned tuned over the next few minutes. We're going to have a good time today right here at Stokes v -Dub. So first off here, let's go ahead and get it right out the way and take a look at the color. Now it's in the afternoon right now, it's after 6 o'clock in the afternoon, so the sun is starting to come down and it's really making for a nice uh, spot here to get a look at the color because the sun's right out there somewhere, the car's here, and the sun's just shining very nicely on the front end. So look at it, what a cool color, right? You know, I'm talking to the sales guys inside earlier and a few of them were like, man, we really like that color on the Atlas and we really like it with the black wheels versus the silver, which uh, the silver wheels look really nice on here. But yeah, the black wheels definitely might make it pop just a little bit more. But I really think that's kind of preference on if you like black wheels on your car or you like silver, right? But anyways, let's keep on going in and looking. Let's go ahead and see if we can kind of zoom in here get a close look at it. There is definitely a lot of metallic in the paint, as you can see right there, that makes this color shine so brightly, which is really kind of neat. And uh, it's definitely a color you don't see every day on a uh, full-size SUV like this, is it? So definitely, if you want to be one of those people riding down the road and get a lot of looks, that's the color right there. It sure is. So anyways, let's take a look at the front. You know, we're talking about, uh, you know, what's the hot buttons on this car that really make people like it so much. I would say the front end of the Atlas is, is one of them, and definitely one of the top ones with these headlights. Take a look at these headlights. They're really cool. Now, they're not on right now, but I'm going to be hanging around out here for a little bit, waiting for that sun to go down a little bit more so we can check out the LED lighting on the front of the Atlas. So even on your S model, they still got the LED daytime running light, two headlights, your brights, all that, and then your blinkers down here. Uh, you do not get any fog lights down on the bottom on the S, but again, I love how Volkswagen's still giving you the full LED headlight housing even on the S model. And uh, definitely a massive size Volkswagen logo. You know, when you look at a lot of the vehicles out there on the roads nowadays, your Dodge, Ram, your Fords, your Chevys, they got big logos on their SUVs and trucks, and Volkswagen's done the same thing on theirs. So, so far, that's all looking pretty sweet, liking the color. Now, if you've watched some of my videos of the Atlas before, you'll know a lot of the stuff might be a little redundant on what I'm saying, but you know, there's always a few of y'all out there that have just seen maybe one of my videos for the first time. So hopefully you enjoy some of my commentary while going around the Atlas today. So another thing about this car, the front windshield, it's big in size. It really is. It's the widest Volkswagen ever made, okay? So you're definitely getting a big, wide vehicle. And it's gonna really, uh, it's gonna really hug the road and feel good when you're driving it around corners and all that. It's got a nice long wheelbase right there. Got a nice ground clearance from up off the ground, so that's a plus. People seem to be saying online they like the boxiness of the Atlas, right? So that's kind of unique to it. It definitely doesn't look like a Volkswagen Touareg at all. Okay, so that's also cool. It's kind of got its own look going on. Now, we all know that the Volkswagen Touareg will no longer be around anymore going past 2017. So if you are in the market for a Touareg and you want to buy a new one, now would be the time. The rear end looks pretty sweet. 
It sure does, doesn't it? Wow. The taillights also LED, just like the front. You still got a backup camera on your S model. Um, I don't think you're going to get a power tailgate, but let's have a look. So that's one feature you won't get on the S. You will not get a power tailgate, but still get a backup camera, which is always nice. You will get standard third row seatings in the back of the Atlas. Okay, so that's another great feature. And uh, the S model will have cloth interior. So no leatherette, no leather, just cloth. Some of y'all out there may say, you know, over $30,000, I'm not getting cloth or not getting leather or leatherette. I'm not getting power seats. It's just not for me, right? And that's possibly so for some of y'all out there. But some other people can see why this vehicle may be a $30,000 plus car, even on an S model. Okay, it's still a nice vehicle. It's good looking. It's got a lot of cool technology on it. Um, there would be the button there for the power tailgate, but you're just going to want to grab right there and drop it right on back down. All right, so moving right along here, the rear end's looking good on the Atlas. The wheels look great. Like I said earlier, it's got a nice stance off the ground. And uh, man, the sun is really shining brightly on this side of the vehicle here. And you can get a really good look at that color. Now, just so some of y'all know, there's no filters on my video right now. Um, there's no, I'm not adding any kind of filters or any kind of effects to the film at all. I'm letting you see this just like you would if you were standing on the lot right now. Um, the video is being shot on a 10 to 22 millimeter Canon wide angle lens so, uh, so we can get all the vehicle in the camera. I don't suggest if you're a car filmer to film with a 55 millimeter. You just don't get, you need a wide angle lens when filming cars. So we def definitely got all the car in the shot and you can really see the color for what it is. So pretty nice. Um, up top you won't get a sunroof again on the S model. You do still get the, the rails up here which are nice. So very clean, rear tinted windows, all that good stuff. Before we get on the inside, let's just take a quick look at the uh, Moroni label. And again, I know it's tough to see because you got tinted windows here, but it says 2018 Atlas V6S, Kurkuma yellow metallic. This one's got the Titan black cloth interior seats, 3.6 liter V6 under the hood. Um, and the, the MSRP on this vehicle, is 33,195 okay so 33,195 and then when Stokes Volkswagen gets done putting their addendum over here it actually bumps it up to 37,190 so pretty substantial uh, price difference here from 33,195 to 37,190 if you're curious you know what are the things that add up to be to be, uh, wow, $39.95 in price difference. You know, you got your uh, safety and security package, splash guards, wheel locks, nitrogen, aquapel, dealer prep, and a market adjustment on the vehicle. So that's some of the stuff that adds up onto the price. And that's that market adjustment and those addendum stickers on the vehicle, they're on pretty much every vehicle on the lot out here if you're buying brand new. And uh, that's just the way it is. It's been like that with Stokes for many years now. But again, like I tell you in my videos, you know, if some of those things aren't things you want, you definitely want to talk to your salesperson inside and see what they can do about helping you on some kind of price adjustment. Because I think for the most part, they're going to leave those on there. Uh, it is getting a little windy and my Volkswagen hat is making its way over there. So let's put you right there. All right. Tonight, I'm just kind of keeping the cameras rolling. But let's go ahead and do a quick cut and go inside and take a look at the interior. All right, everybody, something we're going to do real quick is we're going to test out the third row seating in the back of the Atlas and uh, test out just how easy it is to get back there. So here we go. All right, so from talking to one of some of the sales guys inside, they say that this is actually one of the uh, best Volkswagen SUVs so far for getting in the back of a third row seat. Um, just the way Volkswagen has pretty much designed how the seat moves around and things like that. So I only have one hand, one hand's on the camera and this one over here, so I'm going to do the best I can to test this out with just one hand. But uh, if we got to, we'll put it on a tripod for a minute. But basically, you're going to grab right there. And as you notice here, which is a little bit different than a lot of SUVs out there, this, uh, this seat kind of angles down like that. So it lets it kind of be able to slide forward more, go up under here, and kind of get out of the way. See that right there? That's all the way up right there. And it doesn't even really go up under that seat there. But anyways, <clears throat> pretty long track. It says don't step there, but I got a feeling people possibly would step there at some point when getting in. But as you can see there, that's a pretty wide <clears throat> opening to get in the third row. You're going to want to put your foot right here. And uh, so the next thing you're going to think about is, okay, where do we grab? So right up top, <clears throat> you can always grab right here and then get into the back, <clears throat> which we're in. <sighs> see if we can switch the camera view around a little bit here. 
and, uh, and, and feel the, the rear room in the back. Another thing you're going to want to pay attention to is this is great for kids, how it goes down kind of far like that, but not so helpful for adults. So you definitely want to pull those up. We won't do that side over there, but you'll definitely want to push that up. And uh, with that up, if you can see, we're pretty good here, okay? My head's right there. I know it's a little tough to see due to the, uh, the way the sun is shining right now, but we're good to go. I mean, we got plenty of headroom up top up here. If you can see my hand moving around up there. Um, yeah, so plenty of room up top. We're good to go on headroom. Let's test out the, uh, the, the leg room and see how that works. So uh, what you'll want to do, we'll close this. <laughs> There we go. And then grab here, bring it, bring it on back a little. So, I mean, just to, you know, I'm trying to show y'all how I'm doing it while I'm doing it, but uh, a little, be nice if, if you didn't have to pull that up right there to bring the seat back, but that's what you got to do. But in most cases, you know, if someone gets in the back, the driver or passenger or somebody's going to help you out right there to get in the back. Cause I mean, te technically you wouldn't be getting in the back back here just by yourself, you know? Um, so anyways, with that being said though, now that this seat is right there like that, I got plenty of room back here. As you can see right there, I'm six foot one in height, plenty of rear leg room in the back. I mean, heck I can even get a little more comfortable, you know, I mean, plenty of space back here. So this is really nice. Um, this seat will slide back more as you can see like this one, but if it went back too much farther, my legs would probably be touching the back of the seat. So that's pretty good. Other little uh, features in the back, you got lighting up top right there. You got air vents back here to keep you cool. You got two cup holders right there. Um, you do have on the, on the driver's side in the back, you got a little more storage right here, and then you got a 12 volt right there. So that's pretty nice. Not bad at all. So a couple nice little spots, little things, you know, for third row passengers cruising in here. How do we get out? Let's see how simple it is to get back out of the Atlas from the third row. Um, so what you want to do is just grab here and look how easy that went up. Grab up there to pull yourself up. Grab here, open the door. Okay, door opens up nice and wide. You got a nice section here to get out. Grab there, pull yourself out. And as you can see, that was pretty simple to get out of the Atlas. All right, everybody, having fun with the Atlas today out here at Stokes Volkswagen. Let's hop in on the inside, check out the front drive and steering wheel and some of the features you get on the S model, and then we'll take it for a quick test drive down the road and see how the Atlas S handles. Let's do it. All right, everybody, now we're inside the cockpit of the Atlas. Let's go ahead and crank it up. We're going to move it because the sun is pretty much coming right into the camera lens here. But uh, what you're going to want to do, here's your key. It's got that little cool switchblade feature. Um, on this particular S model, you do not have a push start, so you're just going to put the key in the ignition the old school way, just like that. Put your foot on the brake, crank it up. Still getting a nice uh, display screen there and a nice looking LCD right through the middle there. Let's go ahead and kind of move the car and back it out of this spot here and uh, we'll turn it around. <laughs> right over here for just a quick minute. We're not going to really sit here too long. We're going to drive the car. But uh, before we do that, I just want to kind of go over a few things on the inside. So, uh, like I said, fit and finish is still pretty nice. Um, again, though, on the S model, you will not get a leather wrapped steering wheel. It's just this, uh, this rubber here on it, which still feels just fine. Um, you still will get cruise control audio and uh, all those buttons and controls for the multi-information display screen and all that. Uh, your lighting is over here. Your windows are over there. Um, you do get one touch on your windows and you get them all the way around. So as you can see, just one click on every window in the car. So that's also a nice feature to have. Um, right here, again, you got that nice little display screen there. You know, uh, I'm pretty sure on the SEs and the SELs are a little bit more loaded up. It's a, it's a bigger screen. This is still a little bit smaller, but at least it's not like super tiny like in a Ford Explorer. You know, their base model's just got a tiny little screen right there. So that's nice. <clears throat> Down here, uh, climate control. You got a USB port right there. I'm trying to see, is there any more? You got a, uh, da -da 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 -da, a USB and a 12 volt. And that's about it there. I do not see an auxiliary port anywhere in here right now. Electronic park brake. Um, they put a little leather right there for you. 
no DSG transmission, and you're not going to get a DSG in any Atlas right now. Um, cup holders are right there, pretty good. Hold the cups good, nice and deep, nice. And I like these little these little things here to kind of just make sure it stays in a little bit tighter. Um, and this is what your seat looks like on your Atlas S model. Again, it's cloth. I kind of like how it's stitched. You know, it's got these little diamonds. Looks nice. Feels pretty good for the most part. Nice soft seat. It's not too bad there. Um, no sunroof up top, none of that kind of stuff going on in this particular car. Um, one complaint that I have is that uh, you're not getting sunglass holder on any Atlas. So there's no sunglass holders. I don't know why they even put that there and not add in a sunglass holder. It really kind of drives me cuckoo. And uh, I even said something to the uh, Volkswagen rep out of Atlanta when he came here when the Atlas first came out. I said, dude, why is there no sunglass holders in here? And he just kind of said, well, you can put them right over here, you know, or down there. I get it, but you know. What's the point in having all this here if you can't throw your sunglasses in? Um, also, on your S, uh, there will not be any <clears throat> there will not be any interior lighting for your face when doing your makeup, ladies. You will have to use this right over here, which doesn't really shine over this way. Okay, so uh, just pointing things out, folks. Just pointing them out for some of the people watching that work at the store here. Definitely not. Uh, not down talking the car or anything like that, but just pointing things out that maybe it should have that it doesn't have. Um, it does got your handles all the way around and on the back two window sills up top there you do got little coat hangers and all that. I like this brushed aluminum look. Looks pretty nice. Very clean. Super big glove box, that's for sure. I mean look at that. That's a massive size glove box there. But other than that, definitely is nice and wide and uh, not a whole lot of blind spots. I mean, the windows are all pretty big all the way around the car. All right, let's hop down. Let's put our seatbelt on and, and take it for a quick spin. All right, everybody. We're ready to go. Um, so it's steering wheel. Does it have tilt telescoping type steering wheel in here? Sure it does. Out and in, up and down, okay? So you're not losing that feature on the S. Very good. Um, the seats feel comfortable. I'm liking it, yeah, pretty nice. I really like the outside color, it's cool. It's different and uh, you know, sometimes you like to show off a little bit and say, hey, I got a yellow Atlas. <laughs> Anyways, all right. My camera is not mounted onto the window with a suction cup like some of y'all sportier uh, YouTubers out there do car reviews. I just got it sitting on the dash, so it could roll around and fly around, but uh, let's hope not. Um, one thing on the Atlas, I've, I've, I've driven these m many times now since this came out because it's been very exciting to uh, look at this car. And what I can tell you is it drives really good. Um, the handling always felt really nice going around corners. I even test drove this against the Mazda CX-9. And uh, I really, I mean, my honest opinion, and I know some of y'all out there may think differently about this, but I really thought the Atlas drove a lot better than the CX-9 did. I'm talking like when I accelerated really hard on the CX-9, the car felt like it was wanting to go to the right and the left and it was getting kind of squirrely on me. The Atlas did not. Um, you know, and things like that. Uh, the the, the CX-9 when going around corners and things felt kind of wibbly wobbly a little bit, right? If that makes any sense. Um, the Atlas did not. I think that's because the Atlas is so wide and maybe it's heavier. I do like the CX-9 a whole lot, but driving wise, I felt really more confident in driving this car than I did on the CX-9. But that's just my opinion. And uh, you know, if you go out there and test drive those two vehicles yourself, let me know what you think in the comments section. So anyways, feeling pretty good so far. Let's, uh, we're gonna drive down this road here and we'll give it a little bit of acceleration and see how it feels. Um, people are getting off of work right now and all that, so there's a good bit of cars back here. And I have seen some police officers back here before, so I can't get too crazy with it and, you know, hit 70 and 80 on this, on this back road, which is against the law. So, but anyways, another feature that I like on this car is basically right here in the center, you can actually throw up your mile per hour, your speed, and uh, let's take a look. Yeah, there we go. Well, yeah, you can. Um, it says I'm going around 27 mile per hour right now. So I like I like that feature. It's nice, and it, it makes you a little more aware of what speed you're going. I know you could look at your tack, but it's nice to see some exact figures and numbers right on there as well. Okay, so uh, let's smash it down a little bit. I'm gonna hold my camera here for a minute so it doesn't go flying around. Let's see what we can hear. I'm gonna roll down the window a little bit.
Yeah, acceleration is uh, it's pretty good when you mash it down like that. Not too bad, didn't go for very long, but it did feel pretty good. All right, everybody, let's test out our backup camera and uh, see how that works, where we're at here today. Well, let's hope we got some sensors for the camera or for the car, for the car because it's uh, it's definitely we definitely got some cool looking debris back here or anyways so we'll just kind of keep backing up it's doing a pretty good job haven't heard the first little beep there we go all right pretty good all right, everybody, let's do a quick test and uh, take a look and see if we can fit some of these pallets in the back of the Atlas, okay? that's a, I think that'll be a great way to test out some of the rear room back here to really see how wide it is and uh, get something kind of big like a wooden pallet in the back of the Atlas. So let's do that. All right, so let's go ahead and get some pallets in the back, see how that works and uh, what kind of space we got. Without scratching this beautiful interior, and uh, wow, this is going pretty good. I think that's enough pallets. Just one's fine to show y'all how big this thing is. So as you can see, I got one one pallet in here. It's it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a crappy pallet if you really think about it. It's not the, the full deal. But anyways, it kind of gives you a good look at kind of how big this area is back here. Basically, one pallet fits perfectly from this way to this way, and it. You have plenty of room over here. Look at that. I mean, plenty of space on both sides. It doesn't uh, it doesn't hit the plastics. It doesn't even touch the rear seats. And again, I mean, this is your average size pallet, just like that. All right, everybody. So I don't really have a way to get back there to where all that cool mud and dirt's at. Because you know I want to take it back there and test it out a little bit. But I got a spot right down the road here that we can actually maybe do a little something with, right? Again, you know, we got to work with what we work with here in the Carolinas, or at least in the Charleston, North Charleston area, because there's just not a whole lot of places to be able to film a car at and get some good footage like this. So I'm working with what I got. But uh, if there's a way to get back there to that, I'm definitely going to go back there and check it out. Let's see if we can figure out something, a way to get back there. I don't know, but we're going to find out today. All right, let's see. I'm always looking for somewhere to film the car and get some cool video footage at. And uh, today I just discovered that little area back over there you saw a second ago with all that dirt. But you don't definitely see a way to get back over there. But anyways, let's go to this place right over here I just spotted a few minutes ago. Alright everybody, so I'm not really having much luck on finding a spot to drive this that has a little bit of a different terrain. Really the only thing I can find is this little grassy area right over here. And I know this is really not that big of a deal enough to be able to show how the vehicle handles. But anyways, we'll kind of cruise it through anyways just to kind of get a feel definitely got to be careful there's some big rocks over there but yeah this is pretty much still flat so nothing really to test out other than oh it drives good in the grass the atlas drives great in the grass yeah no mud really like i say charleston has really became a concrete jungle and uh there's just not a whole lot other than beaches and uh, you can't drive on the beaches here either. It's not like Daytona, Florida. But I'm searching, folks. You know, there's a muddy area over there, but I'm not driving through that. Don't know what's going on in there. But we do got a little bit of hilly terrain there. Let's see how it does kind of cruising up right through here. Seems to be doing pretty good. So that handled well. Ground clearance is always a good thing, and uh, this one's got plenty of it, so you don't have to worry about, you know, scraping the underbody of the Atlas. 
I'll definitely keep looking while I'm driving here. This is kind of like a business park area. But we did see those big hills over there earlier. And I'm trying to figure out how in the world to get back there. But I don't think it's going to be from this road right here. All right, everybody. So the sun's starting to go down. I think it's a good time to get some uh, lighting shots of the Atlas. We definitely saw some earlier where we were at just filming at. But let's go ahead and get a look at it. Again, this is the S model Atlas right here. So let's have a look. Looking pretty good right now. Like I said, the headlights are just amazing and uh, I really like them a lot. But let's go ahead and cut the blinkers on, all that good stuff. This we, We're going to really do. We're doing a full review here tonight at the Volkswagen store. So I hope you're enjoying it. Maybe you already own an Atlas. Let me know in the comments what do you think about your Atlas. Let's go ahead and cut our lights on, our blinkers on, so you can see that. There we go. And let's go outside and have a look. So on your S model Atlas, your blinkers will be right there, pretty much where those daytime running lights are at. Right in there. It looks pretty good. You do got some park lights here. Um, there looks like there's some lighting down there. Not exactly sure what that is, but I will definitely find out here in just a minute. That color really does look good during the day or night, but with the sun going down right now, it looks really good. You got your blinkers right there. I like the, how they, uh, they put a small light strip in there. It's not too big. That looks nice. There's no puddle lights up underneath. Okay. You have a small LED light right there. Blinkers look good in the back. Those look nice. Reverse lights are in the middle. Then you do have LED lighting for your license plates right there. Very nice. Let's cut the blinkers off and take a look at the uh, lights up front, the brights. Okay, bright lights are on. All you got to do with that lever is just push it forward and they cut on. And uh, yeah, just what I thought, right down there. So your brights are down here now. It's definitely, definitely a beautiful front end on the Atlas. Wow. You know, some of y'all may say, man, you just don't get a whole lot of stuff on the S model for 33000 But, you know, you're going to have to pay if you want to own an Atlas. That's just kind of how it works, folks. I mean, any, a lot of the SUVs that compete with this are similar price range. You know, in the 28 and up, you know, right around there. Anyways, it's still, it's still a little bit light outside, but we're going to go ahead and walk through and just kind of look at some of the ambient lighting. I think you can see it for the most part. You have ambient lighting basically on all your little knobs and all your buttons there, there. Um, there is no ambient lighting down here. I don't believe there is. No. So no lighting up under there. Ambient lighting here. There's that. Looking pretty sweet. I believe these little buttons here light up. Your screen is lit very nicely. And then basically all your buttons in here are lit up. Do you have a light in this massive size center console? No, you do not. And uh, there's not even a USB or auxiliary port in there. That's where it will go, but not on the particular S model. Up top, here's your lighting. We've seen it earlier, but there it is again. And then you got more right back there. And, uh, and you do have some in the third row as well. For back passengers, you just got ambient lighting right there. And then I do like that you still got your rear air in the back, but for lighting in the back back here, not a whole lot to light things up, but you do got these, which is plenty enough. But yeah, not a whole lot of ambient lighting going on in the back, and there's definitely not going on anywhere in the third row back there other than your lights up on the roof. If you want to see in the trunk area, let's do that. So where would that light be? It'd be right over here. There's that one, and then there's another one over here. So it's nice that they got two of them, and then there's lights here if you really need to cut them on in the back. But that's about it for the back and the trunk. 
for lighting. But it is nice to have two instead of just one. Um, I have seen some other model, I think the Tiguan had a light right up here, which was kind of cool, to light this area down here. But that's your Atlas, folks, for 2018 with the Kukuma Yellow Metallic. It really is pretty. If you're interested in buying a Volkswagen Atlas, folks, come on down and see us at Stokes Volkswagen. We got a great selection, as you can see right down there. I mean, people are even trading in their Honda Pilots on Atlases. That's just how we do it, okay? There's a lot more VWs on the road than there is Hondas, it seems like nowadays. But look at all those beautiful Atlases right here at Stokes Volkswagen. We finally got a whole front line full of them. So uh, whatever color you need, whatever options, whatever packages, we got it for you. Have a great day, everybody. If you're on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think about the new 2018 Atlas. And go see Corwin. <laughs> go see my buddy Corwin right there. He'd love to sell you a new Atlas or any vehicle we have. We got a great, a great team on staff here at Soaks VW to help you out in all your Volkswagen purchasing. We'll see you soon, everybody. Have a great day.